Kelly's getting ready to make us some chicken pot pies for lunch today, but they're of course gonna be vegan. So she can tell you what she's gonna do here and what she's substituting for the chicken, or you can still use this recipe to make anything, but this is how we do it. <laughs> okay, for the chicken today, I'm using Butler soy curls. Um, it is just like a freeze dried thing that you need to soak in water and you just cover them in water, let it soak, and then it kind of gets spongy, but they need to soak for about 10 minutes or so before you can use them and then drain them. And that's um, going to give you the chicken texture. It gives you the te texture, but then you need, uh, Butler also makes this uh, chick style seasoning. So you you will sprinkle this on in a pan with it and it the pan, will you put a little bit of oil in there and then um, it kind of soaks up the moisture out of the chicken from soaking and then you sprinkle this on as it's doing that and that is going to give you the total chicken flavor. Okay. Um, because just to eat those regularly, you there's, would not there's like no, them. There's no flavor to it's them at all. Soybeans, I mean, so. they've, they've made it look like strips of chicken. Um, so if you want it beef flavored, you could just use a vegan beef base to it. Or if you, you know, want a ham flavor, ham base, anything, whatever. This is going to take on whatever flavor you're adding to it. So whatever kind of sauce or anything like this. So if you're using this kind of seasoning that's a chicken flavoring, you're going to get your chicken flavor from it. Okay. Otherwise... Um, you can use something like this. The tofurkey has a, it's a lightly seasoned chicken and it's already all ready to go. This is a little more expensive and I'd prefer to use this for something else. Sometimes I make chicken salad stuff like that, but I also use the soy curls to make chicken salad. So too. this isn't a soy product. This is a wheat gluten. Yeah. So product. if you have a, a gluten uh, intolerance or anything, you don't want to use this for sure. Um, but some people can't have soy. So, and there's other options. Gardein makes uh, in the frozen section, uh, there's different chicken, and um, there's all kind of different places now are, are brands that are coming out with um, chicken substitute. Um, but you can even make this without any chicken, or if yeah. you want to make it with regular chicken, you can too. So, and then this is the puff pastry that I use for the shell part of it. Um, this has by far been my favorite that I've found. It's nice and flaky, um, and it is... Let me see. It is vegan on here. So I have found this at Meyer. Um, I can't, I've never found it at a Walmart or anything like that, but I'm sure a lot of other stores do carry it. It is um, super flake, light and flaky. Otherwise, and, you can yeah. use a regular like pie crust if you find it that's vegan. Um, but you're not going to have this flakiness that this gets you. Um, and so while that was soaking, I went ahead and I cut up some onion. And then I cut up um, two small yellow potatoes, gold potatoes. And then I usually just, it, what's easiest for me, I usually keep mixed vegetables frozen in the freezer. If you have fresh and all that great or canned, whatever works best for you. Um, when it comes time to make the soupiness, soupiness part of it, I use this better than bouillon. It's no chicken base. Um, it is vegan. You have to watch though, because they do make this that's not vegan but this is gonna give you your chicken flavor without using this. This would be, is way more expensive to use to try to get the amount of this needed. Um, Where did you get the better than bullion at that one? You can all, Whole Foods? The, we did get this one at Whole Foods. I've been told you can find it at Publix. Um, I ordered on Amazon quite a bit because I know I can always get it there. It's just, it's hard to find the one that is vegan. And the soy curls and the, this other seasoning I always get on Amazon. Um, and then I put Italian seasoning in later, a little bit of garlic, some black pepper. And then there's different ways to thicken it, which I will use cornstarch and water because that's what I have on the bus with me. Some people make a roux with butter and um, flour, a little more fattening. You can also use, um, I can't even think of the name of it right now. Um, some arrowroot or carrot? Arrowroot, yeah. that's right. I have a huge tub of arrowroot at home. Um, arrowroot with a little bit of water as well. So there's different ways of thickening, whatever your preference is. This is just what happens to be what I have on the bus with us. And then these are the little dishes you're gonna make it in. Yes, yeah, so I'll just, I'll roll out the puff pastry and, and roll it and then just cut it and I'll put it in there. And you're gonna make these in the convection oven? Yes. So we have microwave convection oven and that is all run off of solar power here on the bus. So yes. everything we're cooking is off of batteries and solar power. Yeah, oh, and the kind of oil that I use, I like the best is avocado oil. You can use any kind of oil. This does better at high temperatures. Um, so that's what I, I use the most. Okay, and then this is a uh, induction cooktop that you yes. use to, to heat it. it's everything. a Copper Chef one is what I have. Yep. But 
Doesn't matter what kind. All right, you ready to start cooking? Uh, I gotta let that soak a couple more minutes and then I will. If you want um, a little bit extra um, crispiness on the top, a little buttery, I do use the Country Crop Plant butter um, with almond oil that I will put a little bit on the top of that puff pastry before it goes in the oven. But that's not something that you have to do. Okay. Turn this on. I usually just put it on medium. I have found that if I go any higher than that, that everything wants to stick. Sometimes I even turn it down a little bit from that, but it's only going to take about a minute or so for it to get up to temperature. Now, if you don't like using oil, you don't necessarily have to use it, but you definitely need something in the pan. So you could potentially put a little bit of water in there with your chicken base that you're using, because it's still going to soak up that flavor, but you don't want to use too much because we need to get that moisture out. So that's why I just, whoops, dropping everything. Mm -hmm. Just use a little bit of oil, enough that's going to be able to coat the pan. The chicken really expands when it soaks. They definitely have the chicken look down. You yeah. might want to eat that right now, though. <laughs> no, there's like no flavor at all to it. And you definitely need to do this step because otherwise it's just a soggy mess uh, if you don't. And this, you just want to kind of coat it. You'll see when I cook, I'm sorry I can't tell you how much I'm putting on because that's not the way I learned to cook. Mm -hmm. I just kind of lightly coat and then I just keep moving it around to kind of get it to dry out. Smells good now. Yeah, it, you wouldn't know that you're not cooking chicken. So it just takes a couple minutes to cook that up really good. And like I said, soak up that moisture that's in there. almost done now it's starting you can tell it's starting to want to stick a little bit so I know the moisture is out of there this is probably way more than I want to use I just finished off the bag that I had open so I'll probably make some chicken salad or something with the rest of it Put a little bit of oil. Now, cook up some onions here. Again, it's just kind of by how much you like. We love a lot of garlic and onions when I'm cooking, so I tend to go overboard myself on that. I just want to cook and brown these up. Cooking pretty good now. I'm gonna go ahead and get my mixed vegetables open. And you can turn it down. I did I turn it down a little bit just because it was starting to stick a little. Add a little 
little garlic in there. Again, it's just however much you like. We, we love garlic, so I tend to add a little more than what some people do. That cook up. You don't want to put the garlic in too soon because you could burn it. And that's not good. I like to warm this through just a little bit before I start adding the water in the chicken base. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water in and my bouillon. Now you use one, approximately one teaspoon for every um, eight ounces of water. Um, okay, again, I never measure. I just kind of dump it in and I will do a taste test later and if I need more, I add more. Um, so I'll just put a couple scoops in here. on how thick you want this to be um, on how much water that you want to add to make your your base part of it here so if you if you want your pot pies to be just a lot more with your veggies and your chicken then don't add as much but if you want it a little soupier um, more gravy ish to it then by all means add more because we still need to add the chicken, but I want this to go ahead and boil and cook some before I add the chicken back into it. So we're just gonna want this to kind of come to boil and just kind of keep checking the veggies, veggies to see if they're done. Um, I also add in, I have just the Italian seasoning. If you have fresh, it's always better, but being on the bus, this is the easiest for me right now. I just sprinkle it in. little bit of black pepper um, again if you don't like pepper you don't need to put it in um, some people will add extra salt and stuff I think there's plenty of salt in the base that I'm using and we typically don't add salt to much um, but that's just you know the way that we like it like I said you can add whatever you want you can not, it's always best to not put it in to begin with and add it later you don't want it to be too salty or too much pepper I'm just going to let that boil for a little bit, or come up to a boil and let it simmer. Just chopping this up into smaller pieces so I can add it back in. Okay, this has been cooking for maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, the veggies are nice and soft okay this has been cooking for about 10 minutes or so the veggies are starting to get nice and soft i'm going to go ahead and add the chicken back in that i cut up and if you like other veggies then you can add Sometimes I add peppers in, sweet peppers. Sometimes I add in mushrooms. Um, kind of low on mushrooms right now, so I didn't put any of that kind of stuff in. Um, just kind of want to let this cook for a couple more minutes. And as you can see, I like to make, uh, make it a little bit thicker. I don't like as much of the gravy type in it. So um, if you like, like I said, more of the gravy part of it, you can by all means add you know, more of a soup base type to it. Okay, and here then I just put a couple tablespoons of cornstarch in and I added some water. And so we're just gonna pour this in here and kind of stir it up and it's gonna start to thicken it.
And again, you just, it depends on how thick you want to go. At this point, after this is done uh, being thickened, this is essentially just chicken a la king. Um, so you could serve it over biscuits or toast if you want, if you don't want to mess with putting this in the oven and baking it as a regular chicken pot pie. convection oven I've got it set at 400 I'm just gonna follow what this says on here so because the mixture over here is already cooked all the way through so you're mainly only needing to cook the pastry part of it so um, I don't know that you can exactly go by how long it says on here I just kind of keep an eye on it to watch it get the, the golden brown and crispy and that's how I know it's done um, this is just kind of rolled up on here I had a little bit bigger cutting board on here. a little bit of, I use olive oil spray, cooking spray. You just want to lightly coat that so it doesn't stick. And then we're just going to peel this off of here. I don't have a rolling pin. If I was at home, I would have rolled it out more, but I just kind of want to stretch it a little bit. Just want to kind of sit it down in there. Kind of that gravity kind of help pull it down in. Just need to watch, to put your fingers through it. convection oven is up to temperature. You don't want to get too much because you don't want it to bubble oil over on everything. Then I usually just take this and kind of fold it over and in however you want. It doesn't look the prettiest. If, I, if you want you could take extra pieces and cut it different. This is just with this particular package how I found that it's easiest to not waste.
because I think it's easier to spread it. But I just put a little bit on the top and it's going to melt across there more. And then it just needs to get put in the microwave. Or sorry, the convection oven. Okay, so we're going to put it in the convection oven. And it is preheated to 400 degrees. Yes. We are at a little bit of an angle so it's going to close on me. Be very careful. And then hits. Come on. Let's, let's try 25 minutes and see how that goes. Like I said, you just need to keep an eye on it um, to see it browning up. While that's cooking in the convection oven, the convection oven kind of cycles on and off its power. So right now the solar power, there the convection oven turned off for a few seconds. So we're banking power and then it uses a little bit of power. So we'll end up when this is done, our battery percentage will really be about the same. The Battleborn batteries really handle it well. It's about 20 minutes into it now and it's starting to get light flaky brown top on it. The batteries were at 62% when we started and they're still at 62% and this has been on for over 20 minutes. So that was 25 minutes, they're looking pretty good. Do you think a little bit more? I'm gonna put it in for another couple minutes. Okay. So there we are. What'd you do? How many more minutes did you put Two in? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. So 27 minutes it ended up being. Here, how nice and crunchy, crispy, flaky. Hopefully, I can get this out of here without it making a mess. And there we go. That's mine. Yummy.